Hi, Dr. Garima here and uh, we are shooting another video for Australian Dental Council exam and uh, for all those new candidates, what is this? This is just a discussion of one of the questions that was asked in exam, giving you a feel as to what exam is like and for the existing candidates, let's directly dive in and let's try and solve this question. Hope you all, all, hope you all are having a good day and uh, you are like three months away from the exam. Uh, I'm very close to finishing off the September 2024 paper, so we'll be releasing that soon. Just uh, just craziness going around. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's just start and quickly finish this question. A 66-year-old man with a suspicious mass on his tongue, 66, like white aged, he has smoked 20 cigarettes a day for the last 40 years. That means he was around 26 when he started smoking cigarettes and like 20 each day. Like that's a lot. Cigarettes is equal to lots of nicotine. It's equal to cancer. The mass is fixed and it's approximately 15 millimeters in diameters, like 1.5 centimeter. You are taking his medical dental history and making a clinical examination to assess the condition. Okay. So basically you got somebody who's like in his 60s has been having cigarette for 40 years daily 20 plus cigarettes too much nicotine and now he's come to you with a fixed mass which is no bleeding there is no pain symptom mentioned it's just a tumor kind of a thing which is fixed anything which is fixed is not supposed to be where it is supposed to be has a history associated with some abusive substance directly your mind goes to a precancerous lesion or a cancerous lesion and especially the one which is on the ventral surface of the tongue they are very deadly lesions because they spread very fast because of their proximity to the blood vessels any cancer which grows on the skin will always spread later than what grows in the mucosa inside the mouth or any other mucosal surface in the body because it's very easy to breach the mucosal barrier than the skin barrier. So you reach the blood vessels faster and once the cells reach the blood vessels, they travel anywhere and they can start growing anywhere literally. So all those lesions which are developed in some mucosal site are always very deadly to metastatize. So uh, yeah, we have something like that here and especially when a lesion is fixed, it's, it's very stubborn. It has to be a cancerous lesion. So how will you determine the size of the tumor accurately? The question mentions the keyword accurately. For any accurate lesion, uh, you of course will see the external appearance, but you don't know how much inside it's extending. So you need a radiograph. So the answer is clinical and radiographs. Carcinoma invades through the cortical bone of the mandible fell within a stage. Any, any tumor which is invading from its original site, of course, is a stage 4. Now, what is stage 4A and what is stage 4B? Stage 4A is the lesion is in the close proximity to its own bone. Like this is a ventral surface of the tongue, mostly the mandibular area. That's why the answer here is T4A. Now, when it would be T4B? It would be if it's invading a bone which is away from its site. Now, for example, it invades the maxillary bone. It invades the pterygoid, the mesenteric spaces. It invades an artery, okay, a, a far away artery, like a carotid artery, a coronal artery, something like that. Then it becomes T4B. So the basic difference between the T4A and a T4B is... The lesion is in surrounding to its own bone and if it's a far away bone then the lesion side then it's T4B. So here the answer is T4A because it's in the mandible. It's of course T4 stage because it's already metastatized into a bone. Okay. So which statement is false? You predict the chances of successful treatment by using staging and grading. Okay. That, that's not false. The chances of successful treatment depends on how large the carcinoma and whether it has spread to far away areas. I think that is the further. I think when you'll solve this, you'll get the statement whether it's spread to far away areas. I think that is the thing. Survival increases with increasing stage. No, that's a wrong statement. 
Tumors enlarge by invading the surrounding tissues and the cells break away and travel via the lymphatic system. They can travel via the lymphatic system. Blood-borne metastasis to the distant sites develop last. That's true. The only statement which is wrong here is survival increases with increasing stage. Now, if you have a T4 stage, your survival is not, you know, going to be for long because that means it's gone to other areas of the body and taking control of the other organs. The earlier you detect limiting the spread of a lesion, the earlier you will remove it, treat it, and the longer you will survive. So, uh, yeah, so the statement is absolutely wrong that if the tumor increases to the maximum of its stage, then your survival will become for a long, long time. No, that, that, that cannot happen. Uh, cancer is such a sad thing, uh, but it happens. The only thing you can do is to minimize the suffering, you know, if it's already metastasized to various parts. Like, everybody has to die and everybody knows that, but nobody wants to die suffering in pain, suffering in helplessness, or taking thousands of medications and just not feeling your body. So, be healthy and uh, eat healthy food. The junk food of today is so responsible for so many various obesities and uh, other problems. So eat well, eat healthy, prepare your own food. I always feel that. I still do that uh, and have a more sattvic lifestyle, you know. Anyways, let's go back to the question. Uh, the most frequently type, used uh, type of radiotherapy for head and neck malignancy is implant. That's brachytherapy. That's mostly for the brain, you know, the brachytherapy. External bean radiotherapy, yeah, that's what we use for the head and neck malignancy. Chemo radi radiotherapy. Chemo is also used, excision and primary closure. So the question here is radiotherapy and the answer here is external beam radiotherapy. The cancer was treated with radical neck dissection. After 21 months, a recurrence develops in the mouth. What can be done? See, once you already have a big surgery done, it's, it's no point doing another surgery. The only thing you can do is either do palliative care or it can be resected if small and accessible, yes, but if it's large, then you cannot. If no curative treatment can be provided, the patient will require palliative care. That is true. Mommy. The answer here is B, C, and D. Can, can I shoot a video, please? Yeah. Okay, then don't talk and sit here and listen to me, okay? So, the things that you are supposed to study more, you want to get down? No. Okay, then sit and let mama talk. See, this is a very important question from various perspectives because first, you may encounter such a patient in your clinic uh, requiring a lot of cross to rehabilitations. Like if they had a radical neck dissection or a part of the mandible gone or a part of the maxilla gone, they'll come for dentures and you need a prosthodontist who can fabricate those prosthesis. So read more about it. Second thing that you're going to read is the radiotherapy. Uh, about osteoradionecrosis, about how much radiation that has to be given to the patient, uh, what are the radiation limits that are given to the patient. It's somewhere 50 uh, gyrides to 100 gyrides. There is a good article on that, which I have put on my target ADC group, but you can even do a Google search on it. Learn about when can you do any extractions in a patient who's about to receive a radiotherapy. When? Yes. Bye. Yes, and you should always eat healthy, okay? No chocolates. Okay? Chocolate. No chocolate. No chocolate. Go away from here. No chocolate. So, yeah. Yeah, so this is what my takeaway from this question would be. Read on all these lateral topics because 110% one question will be asked on cancer. Squamous cell carcinoma or any types which requires a radical, neck sec uh, radical dissection. dissection. And how to treat it and what, uh, when would you perform a certain surgery on the patient if you happen to receive one, all those things. So read more about it uh, and learn more about it. Even the tumor staging and grading since the question has been asked on it. So for any other queries, just leave a comment on the WhatsApp or I'm there on WhatsApp, I mean on this YouTube comment section. Uh, WhatsApp is for all the enrolled candidates. I answer their doubts personally whenever they have one because i always feel uh, each person has his own strength and weaknesses in any given subject 
so some of my candidates just message me regarding oral pathology because they think they are weak on it or some of them message just about prostho so i always feel a one on one mentorship is the best way to uh, study because then you exactly are solving what it is and not just taking a generalized online class i don't prefer that so yeah that's for whatsapp and but i'm always reachable via instagram via facebook linkedin you can find my profile so yeah have a nice day bye bye